You're back everybody to Rebecca Ferguson today who I'm featuring with what's rumoured as being her, from her last album which she announced is going to be her last album the title song I'm Going to Love You and she featured it in February of this year on BBC Two Radio's Piano Room. Now the Piano Room is famous for bringing stars from around the world they sing a song and they just capture them and she was one of the people and I am delighted to bring her on because Rebecca Ferguson, if people say, I know this woman, you do indeed. She was, and we're going to go into a bit of bio about her, X Factor 10. <clears throat> was it X Factor 10? No, in 2010, she finished second place in the seventh series of the X Factor. There you go. And she released her debut album titled Heaven Amazing shoulder to shoulder i still think of that song and there's another one with the words gold and glitter in amazing songs check them out on youtube and it went on to be an award-winning album for her and launched her career the album peaked at number three in the album charts and ferguson released a fur three further top 10 albums since then freedom 2013 lady sings the blues 2015 and Superwoman in 2016. She cites Aretha Franklin, Kings of Leon, Christina Aguilera and Amy Winehouse amongst her influences. If we go forward we will say quite a few things after the video because unfortunately everybody I don't have the lyrics to this particular song um, because it's so fresh so new and on her Instagram, we'll go to, because it's so live and going back and forth with different things. She said, my final album will drop next year and we're into next year, 2023. And will be a combination of songs I've written over the past 10 years. After my retirement, I will dedicate my time and energy into helping and nurturing emerging artists and fighting for better treatment. Now I thought, what is going on here? So to my surprise I have to say I didn't realize so because of the X factor she had experienced a lot of difficulties and it said in my research being catapulted into the spotlight by a reality TV can take its toll on a person and after X amount of years X factor sensation Rebecca Ferguson became disillusioned with music and the Liverpoolian singer explains how Niall Rogers reignited her love for music and helped her refine the balance. A shy singer from Liverpool entered the X Factor auditions, forced herself to step onto the X Factor audition stage, putting her fate into the hands of Simon Cowell, Louis Walsh and Nicole Schusninger. Eyes down, Rebecca Ferguson's version of a change is going to come, may have hindered slightly by nerves, but Sean Threw was her unmistakable, as you're going to hear, smoky tone, which Cowell at the time praised as sounding like a true recording voice. It was enough to see Ferguson all the way through to run her up in that particular series, which went on to change the course of her life. From being unknown and having no money to having money and being stopped everywhere, she said it was mad, but something that she savoured. The X Factor final saw her duet with vocally, inti the, uh, vocally intimidating Christina Aguilera on a rendition of Beautiful. Probably the only time Agu Aguilera has been introduced so endearingly in a thick Scouse accent. I remember it, she laughs, says Rebecca. At the rehearsals, they were like, Rebecca, sing. But I was too busy staring at her like a super fan. Sometimes you see those duets, which is the right way to do one. But they seem like they're having a sing-off. I just thought I can't compete. There's no way I'm about to start trying to do this. So she lacked confidence. As she said, I needed some confidence, <coughs> excuse me, and self-love. I'm just not that person anymore. She's morphed into a very self-confident woman. And winning X Factor does not make a lasting recording career. And coming second certainly didn't put Ferguson at a disadvantage. Because that debut album, Heaven, that was released, sold 128,000 copies in its first week alone, peaking at number three in the UK official charts, followed by a further top three 
10 albums released in the space of just five years. So things progressed, progressed, progressed. And she talks about many different things. She talks about, I'm very honest with my lyrics and how I am with people. And she's got and how the routine of having family and children, she had to balance it all. And during the lockdown period, shopping on Amazon aside, the lockdown period saw Ferguson take more of an interest in astronomy using a telescope she bought for her son to examine the skies. And she suddenly remembers the prank her son played on her a few months before. We took pictures of the moon and all these things and of Saturn and I posted it on Instagram. I'm so proud of the image. Oh my God, look what we've managed to capture, she thought. Anyway, all of a sudden I was getting this abuse online saying you're lying. That's a NASA picture. So I'm arguing back saying, no, my son wouldn't lie. I'm, I'm, and I'm proper having it with people, adamant that we took the picture. They were laughing at me saying, Rebecca, you've got NASA's Hubble in your backyard. I nearly fell out with a fan over it. And the next day, my son said, sorry, mom, that was an April Fool's. It's the first picture that comes up on Google when you type in Saturn. She giggles. So she has, you know, got through in, a, in that Liverpudlian humor through dark times. And it talks about her songs, this research, but, and who she was working with and producers, which I, I, I've talked about. But the one thing I didn't realize was herself and many others, and I'll finish up on this, got into difficulties on the X Factor and she felt she was exploited, exploited for money. And others jumped on board like Cheryl, a girl called Cheryl Ladd or Cheryl, she was, uh, a former runner-up in the series as well and she went on to do big things in America but they all came back and said their time in the X Factor was awful I can only apologize for Rebecca we'll come back to a little bit more straight after this as I said the lyrics aren't with me for this song but the person is and her voice let's savor that for a while and I'll finish it up very quickly with a little bit more of the intriguing story of the exploitation thing
Now, I'm sure like me, you thought that was far too short. Rebecca Ferguson, your voice has never changed. You were a wonder on the show. But let me tell you something, when it comes to exploitation, she has a lot to say, and I have it in front of me. So instead of the lyrics today, we'll just go into a bit of light heart, not, you know, the, the fan said, I love you. I'm so excited for the new album, but final with tears. Others well, said, sorry to hear you're retiring from performing, although your other work is so valuable and needed. And that is to defend artists going into the business now. And, you know, others saying, I love you, I love you. I just want to bring it up, everybody, because it's quite important that we hear th this bit. She just says very simply, as a child Ferguson said she was singing from one day and her family had a hard time keeping her quiet. Her earliest memory is her family trying to keep her occupied during a family party. She says I was always singing away and my auntie Jan gave me a piece of paper to keep me busy, she remembers. Most kids would draw little pictures and things, but I drew squiggly lines. And my auntie came over and said, Rebecca, what are you doing? I said, I'm writing a song. I remember the whole room being like, this is weird, you can't even write. There was just a need to sing from day one. A lot of people don't know that Ferguson is a qualified legal secretary, although she can't hide the fact that she's re relieved to be a singer. I used to sit there when I was studying saying, please God, don't let this be my life, she laughs. I was actually quite good, I got a distinction, but you wouldn't think it now if you got an email off me. My spelling is terrible, she says. It's actually a sound job that makes good money, but I'm much too creative for it. I always wanted to sing. So she put herself forward. She went on the stage. She was very nervous. And Cheryl Cole managed to mentor her. And she was from the biggest British female pop band called Girls Aloud. And... I saw a drastic change in Rebecca and I, I didn't see her comfortable at any stage. I just seen her performing, a very naive girl as Rebecca says herself, but she's grown out of that morphed. And whereas she allowed everybody to have a say because of, you know, three albums build up your confidence, she's in the position to say no i don't want to be exploited i feel i'm being exploited here i don't like the outfits i'm wearing i'm not comfortable when i'm singing having to look you know she stood on the stage one particular song and i remember how unearthly is that putting somebody so nervous dressing her up like a goddess she looked fabulous but not comfortable to, to deliver the song because because she always looked down and people said you have to look up Rebecca her voice projected to the ground rather than in front of you so Cheryl taught her to look up but at the same time her nose overtook her and then she had to balance herself in this tight dress and it just became too much to watch and the money that was made out of her performances and all the other people appearing on the show really angered Rebecca because you know, you're basically not paid anything to appear. And people know that. People know that. This is what I argue. 
but it gives you the platform and it certainly worked out for Rebecca but for, even for the winner Matt McArdle it didn't he, he had I believe drink and drug problems and he came out as being gay and he had different things that was going on not that you wouldn't have known Matt McArdle wasn't gay but he came out and he was suffering a lot a lot so Matt McArdle even though he, he had won the contract with Simon slipped away and it was Rebecca that steadfastly grew away from X Factor and the success of album after album and people wanting more of her that made her become the person she is but I think her children gave her stability because where she was weak her son grew up to be a little talker and would always encourage her and from those little words that came out of his mouth it gave her the courage to go back and sing or go back and do whatever she had to do to provide a living for her children and as Rebecca said one one time I was one of the people that used to look at the back of the, my settee looking for that extra change that might have fallen out of my pocket like a pound and then I went to so much money I couldn't believe it and then the security came with that and the fame but she's supporting artists and I support you very very much Rebecca in supporting artists that are being exploited long may your career last and I hope it's not your how can I put last album we want more of you and we've just heard why thanks for listening everybody sorry there was no lyrics but hey isn't she amazing Rebecca you'll be back with the song and the lyrics I promise take care for now everybody bye bye